This is Ahead of the Curve, the Scoliosis Experience, and I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed, also known as the Scoliotherapist, and I'm here to guide you on your journey with scoliosis. With having scoliosis myself, I know how it feels to get brushed off by medical providers who don't understand your condition. I've helped hundreds of women with scoliosis get out of pain and take control of their curve with scoliosis-specific exercise. Whether you're a teen or an adult, a patient or a medical provider, I'm here to help you demystify scoliosis. Welcome back. We're on to another week with um, Ahead of the Curve. I can't believe how long I've been doing this. It's been, I think, eight weeks now. Um, So this is our ninth episode. So it has been raining here for months here in South Carolina, and I don't know where you're at, but I'm sure there are some of you that need this rain more than we do, and (laughs) I want to send it your way. (laughs) It's been just so dark and dreary, and we're used to the sunshine. That's why we moved to South Carolina. So I'm hoping for nice weather for you where you're located at. The... um, Today on Instagram, I asked for some topics or questions that you had relating to scoliosis, and I got some really great questions. And I was kind of, I had in my mind to answer them all during this podcast. Um, I'm not sure what I was thinking. The questions you guys asked were so good. I'm going to try and dedicate a podcast episode to each one of those questions that you had. So I can give it the full attention that it deserves because, um, like I said, they were really good questions and I don't want to just breeze through it and give you a little summary. I want to go deep and in depth with these topics because they're important um, to you, obviously, because you asked them and that makes them important to me too. So um, one of the topics I'm covering today, and we'll get to that in a little bit, But um, I want to actually start off by talking about a study that came across my email um, with being a uh, master scoliopilates trainer. Karina is doing an awesome job of sending out different studies that she comes across so that we can take a look at it and, um, you know, just be well informed about the current research that's being conducted in the world of scoliosis. And the particular study that I'm talking about today is the title of it. Bear with me here. It is an MR analysis of regional brain volumes in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It's a neurological manifestation of a systemic disease. So the purpose of the study was to look at if adolescent idiopathic scoliosis patients, I'm going to call it AIS because it's a mouthful to continuously say adolescent idiopathic scoliosis over and over again. (laughs) Um, The study was looking at to see if AIS patients have different brain volumes compared to patients without AIS. Um, AIS subjects are reported to have poor performance on combined visual and proprioceptive testing and impaired posture balance on previous studies. So it's a lot of big words. Basically, they're looking to determine if there is a difference in the brain size of different areas of the brain of people who have scoliosis compared to people who do not have scoliosis. And they're looking in particular to kind of confirm a hypothesis that they hold that um, the areas of the brain that involve motor function and balance and proprioception, which means knowing where you are in space, they're looking to see if there's a difference there. So um, the methods of the study, I'm going to try and keep this as basic as possible because I know that these can get pretty heady. Um, So it looks at 20 AIS females with moderate to severe scoliosis. 
So moderate to severe means 37 degrees to 68 degrees. And they looked at the right convex thoracic curve types. The age range was from 11 to 18 years, and the mean was about 14 years. And then it compared them to 26 female controls who had the mean range, or sorry, the mean age of 14 years. All of these subjects were right-handed. So all of the subjects also went under, underwent 3D imaging. So the sequencing that they used of the brain imaging is the highest quality caliber of imaging you can get. Um, it captures high tissue contrast and it provides high spatial resolution of the whole brain in a short scan time. So this just really gives us a really good picture of the size and quality of the different structures in the brain. They used the volumes of 99 pre-selected neuroanatomical regions to compare between the two groups. So a lot of different brain areas. The results were there was a significant mean volumetric difference in 22 brain regions between AIS and controls. And I'm going to just give you a summary of the function of the brain regions that there was different sizes. Um, as I was reading the different brain regions listed, um, I was having some PTSD from neuroanatomy or neuroscience in PT school. And I learned all these different brain regions and totally data dumped afterwards. It was extremely overwhelming. I don't, I think I barely passed that class. Um, so the 10 regions that were larger in AIS compared to non-AIS people, um, these are the regions of responsible for language comprehension and production. Um, also the region that allows us to identify the objects we see by connecting the visual cortex with the language centers of the brain. So in summary, pretty much a lot of our language regions, language centers are larger for people who have scoliosis. 12 regions were smaller in AIS. These regions, there was um, more of a variety of functions of these regions, so um, bear with me for all of this list. There were um, regions for motor information, aspects of emotion, motivation, cogn cognition processing, and decision making, refining motor movements, learning new motor skills, converting proprioceptive information into balance and posture maintenance. That's an important one. Planning the execution of movement. Also learning new movement, memory, reward, motivation, emotion, and romantic interaction. So in summary, most of those centers, most of those regions are involved with motor function makes some sense in what they're trying to conclude with their research. So the researchers were hypothesizing that other intracerebellar, so sorry, intracerebral structures um, had abnormalities. I am struggling here. <laughs> um, are, am I sure that my language center is larger? <laughs> Um, might be present that could contribute to inappropriate postural adjustment during the growth spurt. And so this would explain the progressive spinal deformity observed in early adolescence of AIS subjects. Um, so basically there just needs to be a bit more study with this. This was a relatively low and small sample size. 
Um, it would also be good to look at a left thoracic primary curve to see if this pattern is flip-flopped or different in any way. And um, I look forward to learning more about that. So very interesting stuff. Okay, so this brings us over to the topic of the week. And the topic is, how do I know if my scoliosis is structural or functional? And actually, the, the way that this topic came up was kind of a combination of things. I saw a new patient today in person, and um, she was coming to me actually primarily with the complaint of having sciatic pain in her leg. And she has a history. She had a traumatic fall. She, she fell and completely shattered her left ankle. And she had to have reconstructive surgery. The doctor actually, the surgeon wasn't actually certain if he was going to be able to repair her injured ankle. And um, she had that done in 2009. And you know, has been relatively, you know, just normal function since then. And then she went on a trip um, in the spring and the trip she was in a Jeep and you can imagine how a Jeep ride <laughs> is um, very bumpy. And she started to experience a lot of discomfort in her back afterwards, after that trip. So um, she's been having the sciatic nerve issue ever since. And she said that she's been seeing a chiropractor and the chiropractor actually measured the lengths of her legs and said that she had a leg length discrepancy. So her, um, right leg is longer than her left leg is what the chiropractor was telling her. So I'm hearing this. I'm already kind of thinking about some things that might be happening. And she comes in and she's, you know, fairly balanced. And then we do her movement assessment and she has a hip glide and she's bearing most of the weight over on one leg and she's bearing most of the weight over on her left leg. So um, I, I don't measure leg length right away. We kind of go through the movement assessment and assess all of that. And then I actually use the scoliometer because she was like, yeah, I noticed when I lay down that my right ribs are a lot more forward than my left ribs. So I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> sounds like there, you know, might be some sort of scoliosis happening in her body. So looking at shoulder height and standing, one shoulder is higher than the other. That can happen even if you don't have scoliosis. There's lots of asymmetries in our bodies, um, even if you don't have a curve. So use the scoliometer and there's definite significant rotation side to side. So keep that in my back pocket. And then I measure her leg lengths. So um, when I measure her leg lengths, she is three centimeters shorter on her left leg compared to her right leg. So Keep in mind, the left leg is the side that was injured in that accident, that trip and fall, and the right side was uninvolved. So if you think about what happens, especially if you have a crush injury, um, she actually articulated this really well, talking about how she's like, I just picture if you crack an egg and you have that eggshell and you're trying to put the eggshell back together, it's going to be almost impossible to get it perfectly back the way it was originally. And she's like, that's just kind of what I picture when I think about my ankle. And she's right. So um, with a crush injury, 
um, when the doctor goes in and stabilizes that ankle, it just puts hardware in there to stabilize the ankle, but it doesn't really like build it up to the same height that it was before. So she's been walking with an uneven leg length, um, for this entire time. And then, you know, just, there's always a triggering event that causes the pain to kind of cascade. It's sometimes that can be as simple as bending over and picking up a paper from the floor. Like it's just the straw that broke the camel's back. And so after we measure that, have her come over and we, she actually brought an insert, like a really basic Dr. Scholl's insert with her, put it under her foot. And then I had her do the Adams test again and her rotation uh, diminished significantly side to side. So that is one way to determine if you have a structural scoliosis or a functional scoliosis. So she is someone who has developed a functional scoliosis over time. That means her body has adapted to the legs being different lengths. But when we take the leg length out of the picture and level that out, her curve goes away. If you have a structural scoliosis, however, you have a curve and rotation no matter what we do. <laughs> no matter if you are in a standing position, no matter if you're in a seated position, bending forward and doing the Adams test, that rotation, that side bend, the three-dimensional change of your spine, it still exists no matter what. So. That is um, how you determine if you have a structural or a functional scoliosis. Um, and just to kind of wrap up my story with that beautiful lady of mine that I saw today, um, we did some directional preference exercises to alleviate the pain going down the leg, um, helped centralize the disc and the pressure um, on the nerve and she was feeling significantly better by the end of our session. So, uh, very happy about that. Being able to help somebody have that immediate relief is pretty awesome. So, all right, well, that is it for today. Thanks for tuning in to ahead of the curve, the scoliosis experience, small group coaching, Small group scoliosis coaching is a great way to become the expert on your curve and master your posture and your pain. If you're interested in working with me or asking me a question, you can find me on Instagram at the scoliotherapist or at the scoliotherapist.com. I do have an exciting product to sh share with you coming soon called Scolio School. It's a self-guided way to get started addressing your scoliosis today. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Take care.